Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. So, um, when I was thinking about this morning, I remembered years ago, the church distributed this little, a month of meditations for mothers. So, I went through it and I picked out a little meditation that I'm going to share to start our service in honor of the moms who are here. And even though the hymn is, This is My Father's World, today it is My Mother's World. This little meditation is based on Psalm 19, the first verse. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. I have a collection of the most beautiful rocks in the world. Never mind that most of them are pieces of gravel found in alleys and driveways. Never mind that a good many more are small, red, lava stones used to landscape neighbors' gardens. They are still the most beautiful rocks in the world. They are my son's favorite rocks, chosen carefully and given with love. To him, each rock he gives me is unique and special. He keeps track of them. Value and beauty in the most ordinary things. Yet, if we think about it, there is nothing that is ordinary about God's creation. Each part of God's creation has its own unique beauty. When we look at our surroundings through the eyes of a happy and curious child, the world becomes an amazing place. A place where acorns are transformed into diamonds and ladybugs take on their own personalities. Where swing sets become ships and pine trees become castles. Where full moons become vanilla cookies and crescent moons become bananas. The world is indeed a marvelous place. God, help us to marvel at the beauty that surrounds us every day. So, happy Mother's Day, moms. Just a few quick announcements this morning. And uh, a reminder that on Sunday, May 23rd, during the service, we are going to remember those who have passed during the time that we were not together here for worship. So please make sure you get anyone that you would like to have remembered to Pastor Barry so that that loved one is remembered. We're also going to have a graduation service to celebrate everyone within the congregation who's graduating, and it doesn't matter what the program is, but that service is May 30th. If you would like to assist with the Cal Tolison Scholarship, um, please know that there's some envelopes on the table by the offering plate and I believe applications are being taken for that scholarship. And then last week we had the exciting news that, that the church is looking forward to a raucous and enlightening rally day. The date is Sunday, September 19th. Big act, uh, activities are being planned. Last week we took a vote on whether or not we would like to have a meal where we would purchase tickets and do a pig roast or we would have a ham provided by Greg Hurling. I think that um, that particular item is still up in the air, still up for discussion. Uh, but those are some exciting events that are forthcoming in our church calendar. Is there anything that anyone would like to bring forth from the congregation this morning? Just to add a few notes to, to what Deb has already said. Um, we took a, a, a straw poll vote uh, last Sunday, and uh, you missed it, Greg, because we, we asked if they wanted uh, the, the pork and fig roast, or if we wanted uh, you to do the ham, and uh, it was it was half and half. It was, it was really close, and then uh, somebody, uh, Jamie Hack said, "Well, you know, if we do the." The pig roast is going to come to fifteen to twenty dollars a plate, and, and uh, if we do the other one, we can bring potato salads and stuff like that. And we took another vote, and suddenly we were overwhelmed with the food. <laughs> 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 it's, I don't know if anybody told you that or not. Um, we we also have some other news. Um, uh, Paul. 
fall, fall. Good dog, why is it that the brain just freezes sometimes? Uh, Paul Goodbell, you know, was in the hospital and, and he had uh, valve surgery on Friday that went well. Uh, they had him sitting up in a chair and they were going to take him uh, for a walk. I don't know, do you know if they did that or not, both? Yeah, okay, so he went for a walk. So he's doing well. He's recovering from the surgery well. He's in a regular room. They had him, it was officially designated ICU, but it was in a regular room. And hopefully he's doing better. If you if you want updates, um, he's on Caring Bridge. If you've ever heard of that, caringbridge.com, I think is the address uh, on the internet. Uh, just sign up there and you can get updates on, on Paul Goodall. Joe does that often. Um, Donna Schultz passed away this past week. Uh, it wasn't um, unexpected. She was. Uh, she was not doing well, and it turned out that she had a lot of <coughs> um, blood clots throughout her body that they were unaware of, but it all kind of came to a head this past week, and she was in hospice in at home, uh, so she, she died peacefully, and I said that, I told Julie, and Julie we to keep her in our prayers today. Who else? Um, <coughs> I saw... Uh, Stephanie, this past week, Stephanie uh, Herfel is, is dying. Um, the, the drugs that she was uh, taking, the experimental kind of drugs that she was taking at the UW, were no longer doing anything for her, and, and the um, ovarian cancer that she had was, was growing and it's a mess. But, She's doing well right now, and she and Jim are taking a, uh, a week off to go to the Smoky Mountains and enjoy a nice vacation. Uh, I said, boy, what a lovely place to go. So we're going to do that. She said they were going to try and uh, stop at, they were stay at the Grand Ole Opry Hotel in Nashville. And so they've got big plans uh, coming up for that. So uh, we're wishing them all the best as well. Really? Oh, yes, and uh, Ron and Denise are doing well. I heard Ron went in for a, a scan this past week, and it, I just was apologizing to Doug because I saw them yesterday. Denise is doing very well. She couldn't come last Sunday, she said, because um, she had just received her chemo, and it just knocks the heck out of her. And, uh, but now she's at a, t a place because of the chemo where she has no immune system, basically, and so she can't uh, go be with a group of people. So she sends her them, but says uh, that she can't be here. So uh, as soon as I find out more about Ryan, I'll let you know, okay? I think that's all there is. And seeing as nobody is signaling me otherwise, uh, let's stand and begin our worship, shall we? Let's begin with a call to worship. Lord, have mercy. But sinners redeemed. Let us rejoice. Let us bring worship. Please join with me in this morning's prayer of the day. Merciful God, we, we cannot, cannot save, save ourselves, ourselves through our own actions, only through your grace, freely offered. Yet, Yet keep us faithful to the lives we have chosen, and make us examples that others might see and come to believe in you. For the sake of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The first lesson is from Galatians. You have heard, no doubt, of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuted by the Church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism beyond many among my people of the same age, for I was far more zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. 
But when God, who had set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his Son to me, so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were already apostles before me. But I went away at once into Arabia, and afterwards I returned to Damascus. But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face, because he stood self-condemned. For until certain people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But after they came, he drew back and kept himself separate for fear of the circumcision faction. And the other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy, so that even Barabbas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not acting consistently with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, If you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? We ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners, yet we know that a person in justifi is justified not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. And we have come to believe in Jesus so that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by doing the works of the law because no one will be justified by the works of the law. But if in our effort to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have been found to be sinners, is Christ then a servant of sin? Certainly not. But if I build up again the very things that I once tore down, then I demonstrate that I am a transgressor. For through the law I died to the law, so that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if justification comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. The second lesson is from Luke. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector standing far off would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you this, I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled but all who humble themselves will be exalted. Thank you, John. <clears throat> I'll bring to you a message of grace from our mother and God. Amen. You know, we talk about grace a lot in the Lutheran Church. We're a grace kind of centered people. By Lutherans, we're really big on relying on that grace. We, we understand. Paul and the early church struggled with what grace, however, was about. Up until the time of Jesus, the, the Pharisees and the priests at the time, the temple elders, didn't talk as much about grace, but rather were centered more on living the law according to Moses. Huh? It was a pretty tough life to follow. Uh, it, some pretty specific rules about what could and could not be done. Look, for instance, at the Ten Commandments, how they start. You shall 
or you shall not. Huh? You shall honor the Lord your God. You shall honor your father and mother. You shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. There aren't a whole lot of maybes in the Ten Commandments, are there? It's pretty black and white. Either you should do something or you shouldn't do something. It would have been nice if the, some of the commandments had more parameters, like you shall love your neighbor. Well, unless they have loud parties at night and throw garbage in your yard. But if we start going into exceptions and what would be permissible and what wouldn't be permissible soon, we end up like we have today with whole libraries full of law books huh? of how we have dissected those down into the very minute particles of what it means, thou shalt or thou shalt not. And so it was with the followers of the way when it came to issues cropping up between Jews and the Gentiles who were now being accepted into this new faith. Did the Gentiles have to learn all of the Hebrew laws? Did they have to follow those laws like was required of the Jews? If not, did the Jews still have to follow the laws if the Gentiles didn't have to follow them? It, it created somewhat of a chaos. Huh? Uh, what should we do? What should we do? Well, we're used to black and white. Now all of a sudden we've got this change and it's difficult. So much easier when the faith simply belonged to the people of Israel. But we let these outsiders in and now we've got a whole new thing going on. Have you ever read any of those Hebrew laws? The, the, the first five books of the Bible that's sometimes called the Torah? They can be pretty specific, as I said before, and, and, and they could really say what was and wasn't proper uh, according to the law, anyhow. Take, take Deuteronomy uh, 5, 12 verses 15, for example. Honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, or daughter, nor your male, or female servant, nor your ox, or donkey, or any of your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns, so that your male and female servants may rest as you do. Remember that you are slaves and people, the Lord your God brought you out there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Sounds pretty cut and dry, doesn't it? Unless you're Hebrew, unless you're a Jew. There are 39...
know it's complicated. Paul down with the Jews.
all the women who have been like mothers to us in this life and guide those who tend and care for others who need them. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Help us to outwardly show the Christ that lives inwardly, inwardly within us, especially in relation to your created world and our responsibility in it. Make us good stewards of your gifts and defenders of all that threatens your creation. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Deliver those who have been victimized by cults and sects masquerading as religion. Heal those who have suffered abuse at the hands of those who act as people of faith. Forgive us our shortcomings as a church and lead us forward in reconciliation. Bless all those for whom we pray this day, especially Paul Dibdahl, Donna Schultz, Stephanie Herfel, Ron and Denise Bainan, and those that you name in your heart. God of grace. We celebrate Nicholas Ludwig von Zinzendorf, hymn writer and one who helped renew the church. We give you thanks for all who spread your gospel through the gift of music. God of grace, God of glory, on your people, pour your power. Hear our prayer. Incline your ear to our prayers and fill us with power to become living out our faith, to begin living out our faith by the power of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the wisdom of the Lord Jesus. And may the God of life, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Our real Christ is risen. Go in peace and share the good news. <laughs>